Resident Evil Outbreak, a game that was truly ahead of its time and is still played by a solid handful of players today on fan-made servers. It was an ambitious game, stifled by budget issues and the lack of online tech at the time of release, but there is still a lot to enjoy here. This will be a quick guide, giving 10 important tips to those who may be interested in trying this game out. I won't be explaining how to get connected to the online servers, though I will include some links in the description down below for that. This is more to help you in gameplay once you get started. And if you already play, well, maybe there will be something in here even you didn't know. So without further ado, let's jump into... The most important tip is what I'm going to start with. This is something that I never noticed as a problem back in the day. I think it's come from how this sort of system has changed with more recent Resident Evil games, like an RE2 remake, where you don't have to press anything to escape a zombie. This is different here. If you get grabbed in Outbreak, you have to wiggle the analog stick. Or mash the D-pad. The grab will not stop until a certain amount of inputs is reached. If you don't do this properly, you can take up to four times more damage from a grab than you would otherwise. Get in the habit of every time you get grabbed, you wiggle that stick. You do it properly, the zombie should only bite you once at most. You can even press the aim button while doing so to use a bullet to shoot the zombie off you if you have a handgun or magnum equipped. And remember, it's not over if your HP does hit zero, as long as there's someone to help nearby. Unlike other Resident Evil games, where you can generally kill everything if you're careful, Outbreak features respawning enemies to keep you constantly in danger. There are some exceptions, like the lions in the zoo level, that don't respawn and are always worth killing due to how dangerous they are, but generally, prioritize running away by default in this game. The only exception is if you get in a dicey situation. Avoiding getting hit is always the priority, as well as helping teammates. So if you got to blast something to save your skin or someone else's, don't hesitate. Shoot him in the head. Another thing that sets this apart from other Resident Evil titles is that you can actually attack without anything equipped. It doesn't do much damage, but don't write it off against regular zombies at the least, as it causes a beautiful thing called hit stun. Tackling a zombie will stun it long enough for even the slowest character to run past it, and then you can tackle it again so anyone behind you can get by too. I call this the one-two punch. Get in the habit of this. It's even easier if you play Kevin or George, who have special skills related to this. As a survival game, Naturally, your resources will be important to use well, the most important of which is healing, though you don't want to be wasteful with ammo, either. But like I mentioned in tip number two, it's not the end of the world for you to use some ammo if it keeps you or others from taking damage. Most bosses in these games have alternate ways of dealing with them, or a special weapon made specifically for the boss that most people know to save. The only exceptions to this are Hellfire, Underbelly, and Desperate Times a shout out to wild things if it's the lion boss. If you aren't on one of these levels, then don't feel like you have to save every drop of ammo you have. Again, don't be wasteful. If you can get away without using something, do it. But gauge the situation carefully. It's better to blow through a full clip of ammo than for you or someone else to get floored. An important thing to know is that, playing offline, items will generally always be in the same place if you're on the same difficulty, but online this is different. Most non-key items, and even key items sometimes, will be moved to different locations between playthroughs. These are called item sets, and each level has four of them. 
As an example, the employee key and the outbreak level. Sometimes it can be behind the bar. Sometimes it's on this guy, and you just can't get it until he dies. These are the only two locations offline. But did you know online it can also spawn in the bathroom? Be sure to explore. Learning what can be where is always helpful knowledge to have. As an older style Resident Evil, this game does have fixed camera angles, which means sometimes you won't see things coming, or you might run headfirst into a zombie. The way around this is to pay attention to your character's head. Your character will always look at enemies within their vision, so if their head moves, you can know something is in front of you and wait for it to come into view. Another tip is related to controls. The analog stick is analog controls, but if you use the D-pad, it'll be tank controls. So if you know a spicy camera angle change is coming up, you can just hold up on the D-pad and you won't have to worry about reorienting yourself. Something that may seem useless at first glance is the ad-lib system, especially if you play with people over voice chat. But it actually has a few uses. If you can't figure out a puzzle, you can try ad-libbing with the square button, and the characters will actually give tips to what you're stuck on, usually. You can also press the ad-lib button on an item in the menu to present it to others, while still being able to talk, so you can call out for who it's for. There's also a more practical use. If you're by yourself, ad-libbing constantly will show your position on the map. If your teammates are looking for you, they can see these green blips. And on a side note, if you ever see a yellow triangle on the map, run to that position immediately, because it means someone is floored and needs help. Another tip that may seem obvious, but a lot of people miss, learn your character. Every character in Outbreak is unique, with different strengths and weaknesses, as well as stats. You don't want to be the Cindy that never dodges, the Kevin that doesn't crit shot and wastes all his ammo, or the David that won't combine the iron pipes and batteries. Come on, dude, I'm begging, please make a stun rod! This may seem a bit targeted, but it's for good reason. When you are starting the game, Yoko may seem like a good character due to her large inventory. Items are important, right? But unless you want to really jump into the deep end, do not pick Yoko until you are more familiar with the game. Yoko has very little HP, to the point she can get floored in three hits. Her crawl has a lot of invincibility, but it can be hard to use well, and she is actually the slowest moving character out of the base cast. Even slower than Mark, how does that make sense? Her virus gauge is very slow, so she can afford to get downed a few times at least. But this can also drag your team down if they are always having to come save you. If you don't wish to listen to this advice and want to play Yoko anyway, then pick Yoko Z in the NPC list. This character has similar attributes to Yoko, but with double the amount of HP, so it can be good training wheels to get you used to her before you play Yoko proper. And for our final tip, check the difficulty of online rooms before joining by pressing L1 or R1 on the screen. You don't want to end up in a very hard desperate times as your first ever online game, trust me. And if you can't find a good room for you, don't be afraid to make your own. There's lots of people on the online servers willing to help first timers get accustomed. And that's my 10 tips for starting Resident Evil Outbreak. If you want general help with the control scheme or how the menus work, might I recommend playing through the training ground scenario in File 2? You can access it in single player, and it has a lot of useful information. I hope this was helpful to you, and if you're interested in this game, or have any problems, don't be afraid to leave a comment. And if you're looking for people to play with, might I recommend our Discord server?
We play pretty often, and I personally am always happy to help people get set up if they don't know how. I also stream on Twitch five days a week, so be sure to come by and say hello. For any further resources, I'll leave some links in the description. That's all for now. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Bye-bye.